Hey everybody, welcome to Cybersecurity for Busy People. I'm Zach Varnell, and as always, we're just gonna get straight into the headlines for today. All right, first up we have US officials have confirmed that Chinese hackers remain entrenched in the networks of major telecommunication providers, including AT&T and Verizon, and at least six other telecommunication providers or telecom infrastructure companies in the US in what's being called one of the most extensive intelligence breaches in U.S. history. The attack, called Salt Typhoon, which we've talked about before on this program, has not been fully contained, and officials admit that the attackers have not yet been expelled from the telecommunication systems. Uh, additionally, no timeline has been provided for securing the affected carriers, with Jeff Green, the Executive Assistant Director for Cybersecurity at CISA, saying that it is impossible for them to predict a time frame on when we'll have full eviction. The hacking campaign attributed to Chinese state-sponsored actors gained access to at least three key types of information. So call metadata, live phone calls, and sensitive systems used for court authorized surveillance. These systems may include classified court orders from the FISA court, but officials have not yet disclosed whether that was accessed. Uh, notably, the presidential campaigns of both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, along with the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, told NBC News in October that the FBI had informed them that they were targeting and targeted in this campaign. Uh, so officials are urging Americans to use encrypted messaging apps. So actual U.S. officials are now coming out in favor of using encrypted messaging apps to protect your communications over just standard SMS. So I don't think they gave any specific recommendations on which one to use, but you know, there's Signal, there's WhatsApp, there's Session. I recommend Signal or Session. Um, you know, I think play with them both and see if you like them and see what, you know, your friends and family are using or what you can convince them to use and go with that one. So this breach also underscores the importance of avoiding SMS-based two-factor authentication. So, you know, like when you do two-factor and you get your code, sometimes it's texted to you, sometimes it might be emailed to you, and those are less secure than using an app that's dedicated to, um, you know, generating that code for you because that's not sent over something that could be as easily intercepted. So, you know, look out for opportunities to transition from using SMS on whatever account you may be using um, two factor on in favor of an app. So there's ones like Aegis for Android, Authy, Google Authenticator, or Duo, and a lot of those are on iOS as well. Um, for even stronger protection, you know, I suggest hardware security keys like YubiKey or Google Titan. I've not used Google Titan, but you know, YubiKeys are great. That makes getting fished much harder, it makes your two-factor more resilient where that can't just be intercepted somehow, like intercepting an email or intercepting a uh, SMS text. As hard as that might be for just a normal everyday person or even a you know pen tester or hacker, it does happen. And just it's an additional layer of security to either use an app or especially use the hardware-based key. And I see that being supported more and more even on websites will allow you to log in with your YubiKey and things like that now. All right, for our next story, we have uh, cybersecurity researchers are raising alarms over a new Android banking trojan called DroidBot, which has been wreaking havoc since mid-2024. This remote access trojan or rat is being used to target banks, crypto cryptocurrency exchanges, and even national organizations in countries like France, Italy, Portugal, and Spain. So what sets this apart isn't, you know, its technical ability or anything like that. It's essentially just another trojan and it's, you know, on the Android platform. And it's not that novel, you know, as malware, but what is more novel is this uh that it's set up as malware as a service operation where, you know, they, whoever's creating this then recruits affiliates to spread the malware themselves rather than it coming from one like centralized hacking group or something like that. And 
there's already been at least 17 affiliates identified. So that means there's 17 different groups out there or individuals, whatever it is that are, you know, focusing on spreading this malware. Um, and I believe it said the charge for this malware as a service or to like get the malware from the provider was $3,000 a month. The Trojan leverages advanced spyware features, including key logging, SMS interception, and remote command execution, which basically would mean that they, you know, can do anything on your phone, it sounds like. And they use accessibility services to really control the victim's devices and to be able to spy on the screen. So those are things like, you know, screen readers or anything that may be used for, um, you know, people who can't see as well or hear as well or have some disability where the phone can compensate for that in certain ways. But a lot of times it requires, you know, extra permission um, on top of what you may have already given the app. So that makes it where it's more ingrained in the system and it can kind of see the things on the screen and report back. Um, and for that reporting and the command and control structure, it's using a dual channel of communication where outbound it's talking over what's called mosquito or mqtt and inbound just through https which is like normal web traffic so it's pretty flexible pretty resilient but again the main thing here is that malware as a service sort of affiliate structure is what makes it kind of dangerous rather than just it being the best uh, Trojan out there at the time. I'm not sure that it even is. So investigators from Cleefly report that Droidbot's developers are believed to be native Turkish speakers, and they appear to be poised to expand their operations into Latin America, with signs of Spanish-speaking countries being targeted now. They say that Trojan is still under active development, so I guess that's where the you know malware as a service portion comes into it, where Somebody is out there, some team creating this Trojan, but not just stopping there at creation, but they're continuing to improve upon it and add features over time. And if you're one of those affiliates, you know, for the $3,000 a month or whatever it is, you get those updates. So perhaps, you know, it stops bypassing antivirus or it's getting detected. They might be able to push a change to all their affiliates to fix that issue. Or maybe there are you know, new zero days in Android that they become aware of. They could then push those out to gain, you know, a further foothold into an operating system or, you know, expand the types of devices or operating systems that they can target. So like we were saying earlier, the most concerning aspect of DroidBot isn't just its technical capabilities, which are still sound pretty cool, but its emergence as part of a rat as a service model. The shift in distribution and affiliation is expected to elevate the threat, making it harder to monitor and mitigate. Um, organizations and individuals are encouraged to avoid downloading apps from untrusted sources, update your devices regularly, be cautious with the permissions you give to apps when asked, and especially be cautious of allowing apps to use accessibility features when they ask to. If you don't need those services, then probably do not allow your applications to access them if you get some sort of notification saying, hey, this app needs whatever, you know, go turn it on the settings. Be very weary of anything like that and know why you're doing that if you do. So yeah, those services are heavily abused by this particular Trojan, so look out for that. So in our last story here, we have hackers have developed a clever new technique to deliver malware to Windows PC through phishing attacks, and it bypasses even advanced antivirus programs right now and email filters in things like Outlook. So according to the findings by threat intelligence firm Any.Run, these attacks involve phishing campaigns containing intentionally corrupted Microsoft Office or zip files. So you'll get a office file, zip file, or something as an attachment to an email. The email may use some attractive ploy like, you know, employee bonuses, or a lot of times, you know, there'll be ploys that are like 
somebody sent you something on accident, some information that you're not supposed to know, like a HR sent out the spreadsheet with all the raises or the bonuses or who's going to get laid off. And people naturally want to open that and see if they're on the list. And because in this case, it's a corrupted file and it would be unreadable by the security tools that may regularly scan your incoming emails. So you get that attachment, you download it without Outlook or Gmail or whoever having detected that there's anything suspicious there because it's corrupted as far as they see. But the thing is, is when you download it to a Windows PC and you try to open it, um, you know, Office or Word, things like that will try to recover whatever the corruption is. So it may be able to successfully recover both, um, you know, Word and apparently zip files. I guess some programs can do that to recover the corrupted zip file and then open it just like normal, where inside there may be a malicious macro or an object that's clickable that runs code on your system. Or I've heard that they're even just embedding, you know, QR codes or something like that where they then expect somebody to take the next step of scanning that QR code, which takes them to a malicious website. So it's kind of multiple stages there. And the attack, you know, could ultimately be anything, but this is focusing on just how to bypass um, the antivirus and not get detected so that these emails actually <clears throat> land in the victim's inbox. So the thing to keep in mind here is, again, that this is just a method for bypassing antivirus. So don't become reliant on listening to your tools or your alerts only. But you also have to be trained to know, does this look like a phishing attack? Is this, you know, a legitimate attachment? Is this a legitimate email? Am I expecting something from this person or is it unknown to me and I should be suspicious of it? So, you know. Be aware of that, that there may be now corrupted uh, attachments that aren't caught by antivirus and that if you click it and it says it needs to be recovered, that is a sign, you know, that you should probably be very careful and not continue opening that file. And also, if you, you know, work at a company, be sure to educate and train your employees on this too, because... You know, even if you are well versed at detecting these threats and not clicking phishing emails, sometimes all it takes is one person who's not as well trained to click it and now they're in your corporate network, you know, potentially on that person's workstation and then they can pivot to other things, other workstations, potentially servers and things if they're not properly segmented off. Um, also, you know, just keep your software up to date. I'm not sure that there's any sort of patch for this or if there even can be a patch for this, but, you know, typically these things tend to be addressed by future updates. If there's some sort of warning that, you know, may be added to Office or whatever uh, zip utility down the road, it may make it harder for someone to be convinced to run it. Like that has happened a lot in Word where... You know, now when you open one, rather than just like macros going crazy right off the bat, you have to click enable editing. You have to like click yes on this box. Yes, I'm sure. And a lot of things have just made that type of attack harder to convince somebody to do to themselves, basically, even though it is still common and still done and pretty successful. All right. So that is the news for today. And if you're thinking about taking cybersecurity to the next level for your business, or if you haven't really started on that journey yet and you're concerned that your business may be, you know, insecure, your network, your applications, anything like that, check out Asteros.com. Uh, the team there specializes in real world testing, such as penetration testing, red teaming, uh, vulnerability assessments where we uncover vulnerabilities before the attackers do. So you'll receive guidance and you know the list of issues that we find with no fluff, no false positives, no filler, just clear and actionable insights into how you can improve your security posture and remediate your vulnerabilities. So check out Asteros.com if you are interested in any of that and you can see the services we offer there and hopefully keep your business out of the headlines for all the wrong reasons. That's it for this time. Stay informed, stay secure. We'll see you next time.